Hey everyone, Kelsey here with iFixit. Messing with all those dongles has probably screwed up your lightning connector, but who saw that coming? We did. We're gonna show you how to replace that lightning connector in your iPhone 7. For this repair, you're going to need a P2 Penelope screwdriver, an eye opener, a suction cup, a spudger, some iFixit opening picks, a tri-point Y000 screwdriver, some tweezers, a Phillips 00 driver, and a SIM card eject tool. When you complete this repair yourself, be sure to follow the step-by-step -step instructions on ifixit.com. Not only will you find helpful photos and detailed instructions, you'll also be able to read comments and suggestions from other users who've already completed the repair, which can be super helpful, especially if it's your first DIY fix. Keep in mind that opening the iPhone's display will compromise its waterproof seals. Once your repair is complete, you'll need to take extra care to avoid exposing your iPhone to liquid damage in the future. As with any repair, be sure your phone is powered off before beginning. Then, begin by removing the two penalo screws on the bottom edge of the iPhone. With the screws out, it's time to soften up the adhesive holding the screen in place. Detailed instructions on how to heat the eye opener can be found over on the guide. Attach a suction cup to the lower half of the display assembly, just above the home button. Be sure the suction cup does not overlap the home button as this will prevent a seal from forming between the suction cup and the front glass. Pull up on the suction cup to create a small gap between the display assembly and the rear case. Then grab your spudger and insert the flat end into the gap. Slide the spudger to the left along the lower edge of the iPhone. Now, slide the spudger up the left side of the iPhone, starting at the lower edge, and move towards the volume control buttons and silent switch. Now, do the same thing starting from the bottom right corner. Pull up on the suction cup to lift up the display, but be careful not to raise the display more than 10 degrees. Go ahead and remove the suction cup and slide an opening pick along the top edge of the iPhone between the rear case and the front panel. Pull the display assembly slightly away from the top edge of the phone to disengage the clips holding it to the rear case. Open the iPhone by swinging the display up from the left side, but don't try to fully separate it just yet. There are ribbon cables still connecting it to the logic board. Now we can use our driver to remove the four tri-point screws from the lower connector bracket. With the screws out of the way, we can lift away the bracket. Now grab your spudger and disconnect the battery connector and bend it away from the socket. Then use the flat end of the spudger to pry the two lower display connectors straight up from their sockets on the logic board. Moving to the top of the phone, remove the two Phillips screws securing the sensor assembly bracket. With the screws out of the way, you can remove the bracket. Grab your spudger and disconnect the front panel sensor assembly from its socket and remove the display assembly. Next, take out the two Phillips screws to remove the barometric vent from the rear case. And use the flat end of a spudger to disconnect the Taptic engine connector from its socket on the logic board. Unscrew the three Phillips screws securing the Taptic engine to the rear case and take out the Taptic engine. Tackle the Phillips screws securing the Wi-Fi diversity antenna to the rear case and use the pointed end of a spudger to lift the two antenna cable connectors up off their sockets on the logic board. The speaker has three Phillips screws securing it to the rear case. Remove the antenna cables from their clip on the speaker, then use your tweezers to gently lift the speaker off of the rear case. Eject your SIM card, and use the flat end of a spudger to disconnect the rear-facing camera connector. Remove the two Phillips screws securing the rear camera bracket to the rear case, and then remove the bracket. Grab your spudger again to disconnect the camera flash cable connector, then remove the two tri-point screws holding the upper cable bracket in place. Lift away the upper cable bracket and use the flat end of a spudger to disconnect the upper cable connector. Remove the four Phillips screws securing the antenna and remove the top left antenna. Then take out two more Phillips screws to remove the bracket. Grab your standoff bit and remove the standoff screw from the grounding bracket. Use tweezers to gently bend the logic board grounding bracket out of the way and use the point of a spudger to disconnect the lower cable connector. Remove the four screws from the logic board Then use the point of a spudger to move the SIM card eject plunger out of the logic board's way. Lift the battery connector end of the logic board up and pull it out of the rear case. Remove the Phillips screw and the spring contact from the lightning connector, then remove the two screws securing the lightning connector cable in place. If you have a new phone, you might need to remove two stickers covering the screws that secure the lightning connector to the bottom of the rear case. Then use the pointed end of a spudger to separate the two microphones from the bottom of the rear case. Heat up your eye opener for 30 seconds and lay it over the lower edge of the phone. Starting from the middle of the phone, slide an opening pick towards the lightning connector to separate it from the rear case. Stop sliding the pick when it reaches the lightning connector.
and just like that, gently pull the lightning connector out of its hole on the rear case. Now before you tackle this fix yourself, don't forget to check out the full length guide and get all the parts and tools you need at ifixit.com. We want to teach you how to fix all the things, so don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit. Happy fixing.